Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back. And in this episode, we're going to look back on what happened with the race car that caught fire. I believe I have found the reason or the cause why it caught fire and how it caught fire. And then we're going to look at the misconception that exists around fire extinguishers in race cars. But first of all, I'd like to thank you for all the views and the comments that you provided to me. So if you're looking in the back of the race car, we can see that we have a burning hot spot right here. And you can see it on the discoloration of that. You can see how that pipe really burned off the powder coating also over here. So the majority of the heat was around this area. Now the metal has corroded already a little bit, but that's where the hottest point was. And I have my suspicion for that of what might have happened. So the first possibility is that when the tank was refueled just shortly before that, there was some spillage and the spillage actually dripped down the tank underneath and it, it stayed there for a while. And then while we were driving on the track, it ignited. And I'll show you what the ignition or the ignition cause could be. But most likely the cause is different. The cause, in my opinion, and based on what I've seen here, is at the bottom of the gas tank. You see this part right here in the front, we actually have a little pipe. And let me turn around the gas tank so you can actually see it. So this is the fuel feed to the high pressure pump. And as you can see, that pipe is totally ripped. It is totally burned. So I think the main cause was that this pipe right here was damaged when the car had been in the gravel pit before, especially if you look where this is sitting. So let's have a look on the frame where this would really sit. So our high pressure fuel pump was sitting right here on this panel and it was getting its fuel from the gas tank from underneath with a hose which was going all the way through the back through the panel to the pump. Now you can see that the hose to feed the pump is going underneath the frame pretty low to the ground even. So when the car hit the gravel pit it got pretty deep in the gravel. I am 100% sure that that must have damaged that feed fuel pipe going to the fuel pump. And that's the one that started leaking because when I drove behind this car, I could even smell the fuel. I got this car about six months ago for a full inspection. So we changed all the fluids, the brake pads, everything was verified on this car, even the hoses and everything else. And there was nothing wrong with it. But I made one remark to my friend. I said, listen, I don't like the gas tank combined with the battery that close to each other together with the fuel pump and the fuel filters all together here in the back. And this is really asking for trouble, not something I would do. So I recommended to move the battery out more towards the front of the car. So if I look on the battery, uh, this seems to be like a standard battery. It's not a race battery, so that's certainly something I would replace with foam. Now looking in the back trunk next to the battery, we can see this blue device here. This is actually an electrical fuel pump because this car is an injection engine. So you need to have a high fuel pressure. So this is your high fuel pressure pump in the back of the car, which is getting the fuel from the gas tank then feeds it back out over this filter back to the front of the car. So you want to make sure that all these hoses are in a good condition and that they are not leaking at all because that could be very dangerous. And in this case, these hoses, they look quite all right, uh, but you need to inspect them all. Uh, in many cases, these hoses will be attacked by the modern fuels because the modern fuels are no longer like they used to be. So check for that because then they, they can get actually soft. Now this is a race battery. That's the kind of battery I would put into this car. Now while we are at the back of the car, we might as well look at the cabling uh, because there is quite some electrical cabling here. And I'm quite pleased to see this. This is a proper copper bar 
screws and washers and locking rings you know this is all very tidy not corroded so that's good we have another little filter here uh, which is coming from the fuel tank and also the hose which is hanging that low here is something i don't really like uh, it, it could be caught with something and then you rip this hose off i probably would have protection up if it was my car and it was planned to do this this winter but we didn't got to it. Anyhow, um, now let's have a look at what I think cost that fuel leak to ignite because fuel by itself doesn't ignite. So there must have been some kind of a spark. I think that the exhaust ignited the fuel. If you're looking on the exhaust pipe here, it is pretty low to the ground, you know, basically about an inch. The pipe also turns away from the outside it turns underneath the car and i know why people do this because it reduces the noise the noise stays a bit under the car because we have noise restrictions and if you have the pipe coming out that way you're going to have more noise pick up from the guys that are checking on the noise level but of course um, this is another issue i would never put a pipe up like this because if any backfire happens or any flames come out of the exhaust, and this is quite normal when you're on a racetrack, that you might see some unburned fuel in the exhaust that then ignites and it makes a little fl flame in the back or some sparks. It's not uncommon, so backfire can happen. Now, if I look on the video where he drove just before that curve, um, he was flooring that car and then he let the throttle go because he got into the curve. So that can actually bring more fuel unburned into the exhaust. And it may actually have been a backfire. It doesn't have to be a lot. And the backfire will have gone underneath the car. And this was already wet underneath by the fuel pump. So that must have ignited that fuel. The other possibility is that the pipe may have touched the track and it may have caused some sparks because that pipe is very low. So you don't need a lot to ignite uh, fuel. So that must have been the cause of this disaster. Now the owner told me that he is not going to have this car repaired. So it is up for sale for parts, uh, whatever, whoever wants to buy it. I am not gonna buy it. I have enough other work in my other cars. So yeah, it's too much work on this car for me uh, to spend my time on. But now let's talk about fire extinguishers. Based on the comments I read, I think sometimes there's a bit of a misconception about fire extinguishers in race cars. See, the whole purpose of a fire extinguisher in a race car is to buy time for the pilot to get out of the car. And at best, this is 15 seconds that they will give the driver or the pilot time to get out of it. So. It is not intended to save the car, it's intended to save the pilot. Of course, it will save the car as well for small fires. But in general, the amount of agent you have in the bottles is not enough for the entire car. Now, there is another problem with these fire extinguishers, and especially on that car that we just looked at. That's a full manual fire extinguisher. Those of you that have been on the track that have seen a car on fire, you know that the fire extinguishing system is critical, even though you may just do track days. And that is why you should have a proper fire extinguishing system in your car. One that is not expired, even though if the meter still indicates that it's green, that it's on pressure, don't go with it. Get one which is recertified. And as you can see, this guy is expired already since a long time. A fire extinguisher bottle that is in the car strapped down, a manual one, you know, without any tubing? I don't know. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. And let me show you why I think it doesn't make a lot of sense. So this is your typical standard handheld fire extinguisher system. It could be filled with Novak gas, it could be filled with foam or with powder. It doesn't really matter right now. But it's typically held in place with a couple of quick-release 
locks and then you can grab them out. And for your information, that's the kind of fire protection system that was in the car that actually burned. But let me show you something where the flaw is on this. That a manual fire extinguisher inside a race car is kind of a false feel safe thing. Imagine that you're driving the car and then all in a sudden you have a fire. Well, if it's in the back of the car, you won't see it, but you could have a fire in the front or whatever. So the first thing you're gonna do, of course, is stop. You're gonna try to get out of the car as fast as, as, fast as you can by unlocking your seat belt or your harness, and then you're gonna get out and you know try to kill the fire. And for that, you're gonna need your fire extinguisher so you can take it out of the car, take it with you. Now keep in mind, you wanna get out of the car as fast as you can. So unbuckling your safety belt or your harness takes a bit of time. Then you need to open up the door then you need to get out quickly enough, and it's not always easy in small cars, especially if you cannot remove the steering wheel, but most cars you can remove the steering wheel. And then only you will grab your uh, fire extinguisher. Now, there's other situations where you could be in the car, whereby you can't get out of the car immediately, so there's a fire happening. So the only thing you can do then is actually take the fire extinguisher out of its position, and then, you know, try to use it <laughs> inside your car because you can't get out. I mean, this is unbelievable, right? You can't do this. This, this is not going to work. You just can't do this properly. So the only thing a manual help fire extinguisher is good for is for you to try to save the car once on fire. It doesn't help you as a pilot. It does not protect you because as you've seen, it is very hard to grab it, to unlock it, and then use it in the cockpit to, to, to use it to try to extinguish a fire that might be in the cockpit. You're so much better to take your time, take off the bloody harness and get out of the car. That is a lot better than just staying in the car and trying to kill it. The only time that these fire extinguishers are handy is when a car is on fire on the track and you stop next to it with your car and then you grab your fire extinguisher, the manual one, and then you come to the rescue to your friend or to the car that's on fire. That's why they are good for, but nothing else. So it is not for yourself, it's basically for the other. Okay, you might not agree with me and that's fine, um, but please put your arguments down why I'm wrong. And in my opinion, the only good fire extinguishing system is the one that is plumbed in where you have a handle to pull at the inside, a handle to pull on the outside, you have nozzles around the car that will spray on your legs, they will spray on you, they have nozzles in the engine bay, we have nozzles wherever we have fire risk. That is the only good system, in my opinion, that works. Because you can pull that handle as soon as you have an accident or the marshals can pull it and then uh, that will spray the gas or the foam or the powder throughout the entire car giving you time to get out. Of course, a plumbed-in system doesn't help your friend who is on the track. If he has a fire and can't get out, there's not much you can do. You cannot take your plumbed system out. So it has a small disadvantage. In essence, we have three types of fire extinguishing systems. We have the handheld solution, like this one. We also have the plumbed solution with manual activation. And then we have the one which is fixed installed, plumbed, with different jets all over the car, just like the manual jet plumbed solution. But now it is electronically driven. You can either push the button or it has heat detectors or fire detectors that triggers it all automatically. Now, that's not the only thing, of course, because fire extinguishers need to be filled with an agent. Now, there's a lot of regulations nowadays on agents which one you can and can use. But basically, you have the powder version, which you have probably seen on the car we looked at before in the previous videos. Nasty stuff, this powder, because it's very aggressive. And I believe even it has some 
uh, PFOS in it, I'm not sure, but it's not a healthy thing to work on. And it's really a mess when you use it. The other type is the foam, AFFF foam. This is foam, and again, it makes a mess, right? It, it kind of places a blanket on top of the fire to, take the, to block it from oxygen. And then the last one is what we call Novak. And Novak is a gas. And that gas will also take the oxygen off the fire, so it will kind of suppress the fire. That does not leave any traces. You don't have a cleanup afterwards with the powder and the AFFF. It's messy, all right? So, but Novak is quite expensive. Now, in the past, I also have seen Helen, but that's no longer allowed. So Novak is in my opinion, the better choice. I have it in one of my race cars, which is unfortunately not at home at this moment in time. But I can show you the other system that I have as a plumbed in manual system. So let's have a look. In the B, I have a plumbed in fire extinguishing system with nozzles in the engine compartment on those hot spots, obviously where the carburetor is, where the exhaust is. But I also have nozzles inside the cabin. And the bottle is also inside the cabin. Here you see the plumbing in the engine bay. We'll be coming out of the footwell of the passenger with a pipe and then we distribute it to one side of the engine and to the other side. And here we have that nozzle spraying right where the ignition is. As soon as I pull the handle, we'll spray on the engine together with all the other nozzles in total, I have fitted eight nozzles in the car. There's a nozzle right here as well, spraying towards the carburetor, but also towards the exhaust, and also an additional nozzle, which is also spraying on the exhaust manifold. The reservoir is next to the driver, although the driver doesn't have to do anything with it, just pulling out the safety pin and that's it. And some people say size doesn't matter. Well, it does matter on a car. If you have more nozzles, a big car, you're going to need to have a bigger reservoir. This one is about 2.1 liters. And you can see that the bottle or the reservoir is plumbed in into the system. It can be activated from inside the cabin by pulling this handle. I'm not going to pull it now because otherwise the whole car will be covered with foam. But I have a warning saying remove the pin before you drive. And we have an external panel for the marshals to pull whenever that would be necessary for the fire extinguisher to activate it. And then, of course, the emergency power shut off, but that's for another purpose. But of course, if you have fire, you want to pull both. We've got nozzles inside the cabin on the roll cage. So as you can see, I got one on top of the mirror, but also one on the side. So this one right here is spraying towards the driver, and there's another one right here underneath uh, spraying in the footwell where my feet are. So in the cabin, I have one, two, three, four jets, and I have three of them in the engine bay, and I have one in the back where the gas tank is. On the open wheel races, I have the same thing. I have an emergency pull for fire, and I even put a little flag up and the sign. So this is where the marshals would have to pull when the car is on fire. And I always have a second pull handle inside the cabin, as you can see here. And if you can see it, we also have a jet in the cockpit right there. There's another one on the other side, and there's a couple of jets around the engine. The bottom line is, don't go on the cheap. Buy a proper fire extinguishing system. Have it plumbed into your car, because it's all about your safety, and it's going to buy you time to get out of your car in case of a fire. And God forbid that you get involved in a fire in a race car because that is not something you should be looking forward to. So thank you so much for viewing this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.